I want to ask you about autism as well. This is an area that a lot of people have interest in for personal <laughs> and academic reasons. Can you speak a little bit about what autism is and what we've maybe started to learn in the past five to 10 years about how the, the brain of an autistic person is different from that of a neurotypical person? Yeah. So autism uh, always intrigued me. Uh, I was so uh, both dismayed and intrigued by how physically, you know, undamaged these people and their brains are. In fact, many people with autism, their brains are larger even uh, uh, than a, a typical brain. Um, and there's no real structural problem. There's no real EEG thing. You can maybe there's a little more power in one band of the spectrum. You know, maybe in in some forms of the disorder, you can see there's a few more of one kind of cell than another. Um, but in general, brains look fine, body is fine, uh, and yet you can have very severe dysfunction in these very specific domains. Um, and autism is defined by deficits in communication and social interaction, and also by, in many cases, stereotyped or repetitive, repetitive behaviors. And why do these go together? And what's the mechanism? Where does it come from. Now, there are a lot of genes that are associated with autism. It's very genetically associated. Um, but we, th those genes don't fall into a, a simple picture. Some of those genes are related to synapses. Some of those genes are related to projections across the brain. Um, some are related to chromatin, how DNA is wound up and structured within the nucleus of a cell. Why chromatin? Nobody knows. Um, so it doesn't fall into a, a neat picture. Um, there are some themes, though, some, some, some uh, sort of little cracks in the, in, in, the, in the door that let us peer into this mystery. One of them is that uh, there's a theme of over-excitation, of over-excitability. And this, a number of different things point in the same direction. So uh, first of all, people who have autism are more likely to have epilepsy, more likely to have seizures. Um, and so there's association with overexcitability. There is more of this high frequency power in one band of the spectrum on, on average in people with autism. So there's a, there's a little more power in that, uh, in that spectrum in their brain activity. And then uh, there's a lot of their behavioral uh, properties and symptoms that re sort of suggest this uh, preponderance of, of excitation. There, uh, uh, there's um, a, uh, uh, an a ease of being overwhelmed, a susceptibility to being overwhelmed by, by things. Um, and this shows up in, could even be simple sounds, unexpected sounds or touches, but then certainly uh, social interaction very rich in information. You know, if you think of all the streams of information that that you're synthesizing to make sense of what I'm saying. You've got, you know, I've got my hands here. I've got the, the you know, you, there's the eye contact. There's whatever facial expression I've got, and then there's the complexity of the words coming out in the sentences. You're as you're listening, you're fusing all those together into this model of me and what I'm saying. And that that's human social communication. It's extremely information rich. There's a lot of it. Patients with autism experience that as very overwhelming, that that information rate itself, it's just too much and they can't keep up with it. And that the great value, and I talk about this in projections uh, as well, is and, and discussing with my, my patients, they very much endorse this um, concept of being overwhelmed by the information, by the rate of information. It's not so much that they couldn't grasp any one part of it, but it's 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 the rate of information flow, and so this is this is a very, I think, interesting and helpful way to look at this. And, and optogenetics and work in animals has also given us a window into this as well. We've been able to test questions like is is there a causal 
significance of overexcitation relative to inhibition uh, in, in terms of how social interaction happens. And we were able to find uh, quite a bit of evidence for that. And so it's a, it's a pretty interesting you know, process where, again, the, the animal work and the, the human clinical work are helping each other and helping us move, move toward understanding.